Mario from Nario. Hello.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. At this moment, if you have not already done so, I would like to request that you take your seats. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this ceremonial meeting on the occasion of the opening of the new parliamentary year that is about to commence. Allow me to make some announcements to ensure an orderly exit from the hall by all present when the meeting is closed. Right before the end of the meeting, His Excellency the Governor and his entourage will, ex will, will be escorted by the reception and departure committee to the conference room. Upon the return of the committee to the hall, the President of Parliament will close the meeting. The President of Parliament and the Prime Minister will then leave the hall accompanied by the Secretary General of Parliament and the Secretary General of the Council of Ministers to join His Excellency in the conference room. This will be followed by the dignitaries representing the French side of the island. After that, members of parliament, ministers, and the remainder of the guests will leave the hall to make their way to the Saraswati Square to view the parade. Thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of the Council of Ministers. Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Silveria Jacobs, accompanied by the Secretary General of the Council of Ministers. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the entrance of the President of Parliament. The President of Parliament, the Honorable Mr. Siddharth Bijlani.
Good morning, members of parliament, support staff, radio listeners, TV viewers, online viewers, and members of the media. We have established a quorum of 13 members. I open this solemn meeting, which has been convened to open the parliamentary year 2023-2024, as prescribed by our constitution in the article 46, paragraph two, which states that the parliamentary year begins on the second Tuesday of September with a speech by or on behalf of the governor of the policies of the government in a meeting convened to that end by the parliament. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. I have received notice of absence from the following members, MP Marlin and MP Emmanuel. For this special occasion, we have several invitees. I would like to welcome the honorable members of parliament, the honorable ministers of Council of Ministers, the honorable vice president of the Court of Justice, the honorable president of the Constitutional Court, vice chair lady of the Council of Advice, Chairman of the General Audit Chamber, Ombudsman, Vice Chairperson of the Central Voting Bureau, Chairperson of the Corporate Governance Council, Chief Public Prosecutor, Representative of the Council for Maintenance of Law and Order, Representative of the Integrity Chamber, Secretary General of the Council of Ministers, Secretary General of the Courts, Secretary General of the Council of Advice, Secretary General of the General Audit Chamber, Secretary General of the Ombudsman, Secretary General of the Social Economic Council, Director of the Integrity Chamber, Secretaries General of the Ministers of Government, Representatives of the Netherlands in St. Martin, Commander of the Military Detachment on St. Martin, Director of the Cabinet of Governor, Commander of the Voluntary Corps, VKS, Representative of the Coast Guard Support Station on St. Martin, Director of the Point Blanche Detention Center, Representative of the Department of the Legal Affairs and Legislation, President of the Youth Parliament, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I will now appoint the members of the Reception and Departure Committee. For this committee, I appoint MP Rolando Bryson, MP Chanel Brownbill, and MP Ludmila de Weaver. I will adjourn the meeting so the members of the Reception and Departure Committee can proceed to the entrance of the Parliament Building and wait at the stairs to receive, the, receive and escort His Excellency, the Governor, and his entourage to the General Assembly Hall of the Parliament. I hereby adjourn this meeting.
Ze hebben nu voor Koland van de Erewacht en elke Erewacht geeft een inspectie. Goed, dan mag je uit nodig. I herewith reopen the meeting. Please rise for the arrival of His Excellency the Governor. Seated. I welcome His Excellency the Governor and his entourage to this solemn meeting. 
I give the floor to His Excellency for his address to Parliament. Mr. Chairman, members of Parliament, good morning. As stipulated in our Constitution, I now stand before you on the second Tuesday in September to set out the policy to be pursued by government in the upcoming 2023-2024 parliamentary year. Since 2021, Reform, reform measures have been established as part of the mutual agreements with the Netherlands in exchange for financial support as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Structural reforms for the improvement and restructuring of government are in the areas of financial control, cost and effectiveness of the public sector, taxes, financial sector, economic reforms, health, education, and strengthening rule of law. From the very beginning, the government of St. Martin has stressed the importance of the national development vision as instructions for all St. Martin development, including these reform measures. The areas for reforms connect with the development themes in St. Martin's national vision. The national development vision harmonizes the pursuit of the sustainable development goals and the Small Island Developing States Development Agenda. In order for St. Martin to be a better enable, excuse me, in order for St. Martin to be better enabled to monitor and evaluate the achievement of these goals, the Sustainable Development Goals support identifying and guiding development priorities for St. Martin through the development of a national development plan. The first steps towards developing St. Martin's National Development Plan under the current national development vision have already started. There is agreement that anchoring all ongoing projects under the umbrella of the national development vision resulting in a national development plan would improve St. Martin's chances of anchoring a sustainable future. Further, with the financial and capacity support through the mutual agreement between the Netherlands and St. Martin on priority reform measures, this is the opportune moment for this development. It is government's aim and priority to present the National Development Plan in the first part of the year 2024. In achieving these goals, donor relations also remain a priority of government. Funding has been secured mainly from the EU for several projects aimed at achieving the goals of the National Development Vision. In addition, the Department of Interior and Kingdom Relations in The Hague continues to build direct partnerships with stakeholders that are imperative to supporting the sustainable development of St. Martin. By building these relationships, advocacy and awareness is brought to the development needs and ambitions of St. Martin. Further in this context, Although we live on an island, no man is an island, as is proverbially said. As a small island, the capacity to achieve our goals unilaterally is limited. With this in mind, government will continue engagement with regional organizations and discussions are ongoing and will intensify in the latter part of 2023 with CARICOM, particularly in and around climate, sustainable development, and financing and social affairs as well as the Caribbean Development Bank and the Organization for Eastern Caribbean States. This engagement will underscore and build support for issues that are important for St. Martin internationally. Government has moved to establish, and we are already existing, strengthened relations 
relationships with regional governments. The most important of these relationships is with French St. Martin and by extension, the French Republic. Government, along with its relevant partners in The Hague, believe that development will be amiss without including French St. Martin. For the first time, Dutch and French St. Martin have convened to develop a high-level cooperation strategy. In addition, government recognizes the need for a comprehensive and overarching strategy that harmonizes, aligns, and synchronizes the development of the island as a whole. Government believes that collaborative actions will have more impact and allow for the pooling of resources, thereby enhancing common advancement for the people on the northern and southern side of the island. And make no mistake about it, enhancing advancement and progress of the people of and our country is much needed at this time and is at the top of the priority list for government. In this context, government plans to execute balanced macroeconomic fiscal policies and initiatives that aid in the expansion and diverse diversification of St. Martin's economy, provide fiscal sustainability, and to be the catalyst for innovation. The state of the economy in St. Martin for 2023 has shown promising signs of recovery and growth. The continuous and gradual increase in visitor arrivals particularly in stay over tourism, has contributed to the expansion of hotel occupancy, resulting in positive impacts on employment rates and government revenue. Furthermore, we see new developments in the hospitality industry, indicating confidence in the economy and in the tourist industry. Unemployment is on the decline, signifying progress in job creation and workforce participation providing more opportunities for the local population. The prices for fuel and electricity had an up upward pressure on the general inflation rate. The Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin has projected that inflation will reach a level of 3.7% for 2023, following a decline to 2.2% in 2024. Over the medium term, inflationary pressures are expected to stabilize around 2%. This decrease in inflation indicates improved economic stability and purchasing power for consumers. However, it is essential to address the recent decrease in GDP after an initial upward trend, as well as to continue monitoring economic indicators to sustain growth in the long term. This decrease can be attributed to an increase in imports of goods and services from both the public and private sectors. Notably, trust fund related imports have played a role in this trend as the country aims to catch up on construction delays, specifically in projects like the Princess Juliana International Airport expansion and the St. Martin General Hospital. This increase in the economic outlook is due to an increase in activity in hotels and restaurants, transport, storage and communication, real estate, renting and business activity, and the construction sectors. While hotel room inventory will remain comparable to 2022, a slightly higher occupancy rate is expected in 2023. In addition to this, the short-term rental of alternative accommodation has also accelerated in 2023. As it pertains to cruise tourism, the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin expects that this will approach its pre-pandemic level. In the latest Article 4 staff report of the IMF, it shows that projected real GDP for 2023 has substantially recovered with a growth projection of approximately 3%. Over the medium term, growth will ease, with pre-hurricane output now expected to be achieved in 2024. This will also lead to an increase in income for the country for the coming years. Although we see an improvement in the financial situation of the country, the two main objectives in this regard of government are to better control finances by improving financial management, and secondly, to modernize its tax legislation laws and systems in order to generate more revenue, taking into consideration that the CFT is expecting to see surpluses starting from 2024. The latter is also driven by the fact that everyone wants an improvement in their standard of living. From those of us that have to work for our money, to those whose money works for them. Improvements such as 
smooth, well-kept roads to drive on, environmentally clean and safe neighborhoods for our children to grow up in, quality education, a sustainable and stable electricity grid, and a healthy economy in order for us to make a good living, do business, etc., etc. And we all hold government as the one responsible to ensure this improvement, possibly rightfully so. It's debatable. Government tackles these wants and needs of the people via the funds coming into its coffers. This poses a challenge to government because tax compliance, which makes up for the brunt of government's income, is low and has been low for some time now. What's also deb debatable is the reason for the low tax compliance. Nevertheless, to improve compliance and address the wants and needs of the people, government has set in motion the plans to transform our current tax administration, which also includes the acquiring of portals and a new tax system. Besides the transformation of the tax administration, government is also looking at adjusting the current fiscal laws and is also in the process of making the necessary fiscal adjustments to register at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in order to collaborate on domestic and international policies that will stimulate the economic progress for country Seymour. Government's efforts in stimulating the economic progress by diversifying the economy beyond traditional tourism, focusing on renewable energy, information technology, and agriculture present valuable opportunities for future economic growth and sustainability. <coughs> government plans to continue to strategically leverage the orange, green, and blue economy. Government, through the Tourist Bureau, is actively seeking ways to diversify the tourist industry. First, via supporting the orange economy by organizing and supporting various cultural events that provide opportunities for local artists to showcase their musical talents and visual arts talent. Second, government is also focused on promoting sport tourism by supporting a variety of events that attract tourists from neighboring Caribbean countries. This not only boosts our tourism receipts, but also increases awareness about our destination as a sports tourism hub. Last, culinary tourism is another area of growth and opportunity for us with several activities throughout the year that highlight our diverse culinary offerings. Government's efforts have been multifaceted to boost tourism in our region, including a comprehensive marketing strategy, which involves a number of co-op campaigns with airlines and online travel agents. Additionally, government has engaged a number of public relations services in the various regions to market the destination. Collaborating with content creators, Government has focused on producing captivating and informative material to highlight the island's unique offerings. Government has plans to commence and finalize the upgrading and reconstruction of the Phillipsburg Marketplace, bus terminal, and beautification of the Phillipsburg area. Government, via the Tourism Bureau, will continue to focus on airlift development and develop a multi-year airlift development plan in collaboration with the airport. The focus will be on existing airlines to increase frequency, as well as new airlines from various regions such as the USA, Canada, and Europe. Government, in collaboration with the airport, are in the final stages of the official immigration entry form for the country, which will improve the country's data collecting tremendously, as well as the ability to market more effectively. Launch is set for the fourth quarter of 2023. In the area of agricultural development, Government's plans are execution of the Memorandum of Understanding with the other Dutch Caribbean Islands territories to promote mutual agricultural development, support for farmers' market, continued oversight by government of the implementation of the Agricultural in Schools project to promote agricultural education among students, and various other agricultural initiatives, including the Train the Trainer program in hydroponics, curriculum review to include agricultural science in the elementary and secondary schools, and the development of an online portal for agricultural livestock and fisheries. Small businesses are the engine of our economy because they are strong economic growth drivers. Government recognizes this and therefore supports this sector in the following manner. The small and medium-sized enterprises 
Development Program will be transformed into an entrepreneurial development center with a focus on post-startup services and support. Government has partnered with stakeholders to provide opportunities for micro-businesses to showcase their products through fairs and events in Phillipsburg at different intervals throughout the year. Government is also paying keen attention to the developments in the cruise industry regarding lowering their carbon footprint by consuming more sustainable energy and the possibilities this may offer the country by providing this sustainable energy to the many cruise vessels that visit our port. Despite these positive developments, St. Martin still faces significant challenges. The vulnerability to external shocks, such as natural disasters and global economic downturns, demands continued focus on disaster preparedness and building resilience. Emphasizing sustainable tourism practices will be crucial in preserving the environment and ensuring the tourism industry's longevity. Government plans on sustainable tourism practices and preserving the environment are as follows. Government plans to establish the establishment of a nature park encompassing the island of Little Key in Simpson Bay Lagoon. The proposed establishment of the Little Key Nature Park aligns with St. Martin's draft development plan for Simpson Bay, which designates the island as nature and the surrounding waters as water natural value. These designations emphasize the commitment to conserve, restore, develop, and manage the natural and ecological values of the area with restrictions on construction and emphasis on nature-oriented recreational activities. In partnership with the St. Martin Nature Foundation, government developed the Corena Project, Coastal Resilience Needs Assessment, for funding through the Resilience, Sustainable Energy, and Marine Biodiversity Program. The goal of Project Corena is to advance progress towards the sustainable and resilient area-based spatial management of the marine and coastal environment of St. Martin. The project will achieve this by executing a number of studies around the marine and coastal environment including baseline biodiversity assessments, socioeconomic valuations, and an assessment of coastal and marine risks and vulnerabilities. Through this project, government staff will also receive capacity training in basic and advanced GIS, Geographic Information System Analysis, supporting the future development of evidence-based policies for the sustainable development of St. Martin. Furthermore, the project will carry out a targeted education and awareness campaign and conduct research into effective behavioral change interventions. Project Corena is currently be beginning its formal implementation and is projected to run until the end of April 2024. In addition to this project, government has collaborated on and co-funded with the Harbor and the St. Martin Marine Trade Association an economic impact study on the maritime industry. In order to improve the management of solid waste, government has initiated the Integrated Solid Waste Management St. Martin Project. The objective is the establishment of a solid waste authority that will be responsible for all elements of the solid waste management system, consisting of the introduction of tariffs, the collection of fees, and the subsequent management of the solid waste through a solid waste authority in the coming five years. The project is on track to deliver, amongst others, a proposed legal form for the Solid Waste Authority, the necessary draft legislation, and the vision on solid waste management for St. Martin in 2030. Government's policy plans on disaster preparedness and building resilience encompasses a varied range of areas from disaster management in itself, fostering resilience learning, to building codes and ICT. Preparations are in process for a memorandum of, of understanding between Sabre, St. Eustatius, and St. Martin to strengthen the working relationship in the field of disaster management. It has been realized that the dependencies between these three islands are such that such an MOU is vital. Recently, the Kingdom Council of Ministers has approved the accession of St. Martin to the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency as a full-fledged participating state. It is expected that this accession will be formalized during this parliamentary year. This will allow St. Martin to further integrate into the regional disaster management community as well as share experiences and build capacity. Government is embarking on a project that will secure the development of the framework for the institutional structure for the Office of Disaster Management.
This will include implementing processes, administrative procedures, roles, and responsibilities for the proposed Office of Disaster Management in keeping with regional and international best practices. This will ensure that a harmonized and comprehensive approach to resilience is taken to better address the challenges posed by climate change, new diseases, and changing socioeconomic contexts. The Fostering Resilient Learning Project, which has received a funding allocation of $26.8 million US dollars from the Trust Fund, is making steady progress. The project is actively engaged in three main components, rebuilding of inclusive schools, restoring li library services, and strengthening the management information system in education, culture, youth, and sports. Moving on in 2023 and into 2024, the, pro the project aims to conduct workshops to build the capacity of stakeholders in developing maintenance plans for the newly constructed facilities. Overall, the Fostering Resilient Learning Project seeks to improve the resilience of the education sector and enhance services in education, culture, youth, and sport for the betterment of society. The situation al analysis and target group assessment has been finalized and will be incorporated in the special needs policy that will inform the special needs program for the new to be constructed schools anticipating the opening of the doors in 2025 for the Sister Marie Laurent School and 2026 for the Charles Leopold Bell School. The Child Resilience and Protection Project with an allotted amount of 5 million US dollars continues to be implemented by the UNICEF Netherlands in close collaboration with the government. The project's focus is on building child resilience and strengthening the systems and institutions for child protection. Government is currently in the final stages of having the new National Building Code implemented and intends to do this before the end of this year. Once the Building Code is implemented, St. Martin will build in accordance with new building regulations that are aimed to reinforce our built environment and make buildings more safe, resilient, and sustainable to withstand higher category hurricanes and other natural disasters. From an ICT perspective, government will continue with its focus on, first, strengthening the organization's infrastructure, second, increasing the cybersecurity environment, and third, digitizing business process for various department, processes for various departments, excuse me. In focusing on these three key areas for the remainder of 2023 and the start of 2024, emphasis will be on improving disaster recovery and business continuity for a quick continuation of business operations in the event of a disaster, introducing additional security features to the organization to increase and strengthen the cybersecurity environment. This includes introducing a cybersecurity awareness program for the organization and continued digitization of business processes throughout the organization to improve the efficiency of service delivery for both internal and external stakeholders. Improving the efficiency of service delivery for internal and external stakeholders is a priority for government this parliamentary year. In addition to improving service, the following policy initiatives should also go a long way towards eliminating the plaguing issue of different departments within government operating as organizational silos and the people being pushed from pillar to post. The phased launch of an online services for business licenses marks a significant step forward in streamlining the process and improving efficiency. Through careful restructuring of work processes, government aims to achieve higher levels of productivity and effectiveness and faster processing times for business owners, ultimately improving the level of service. Government will be implementing change management as a catalyst to improve service standards. Several key support divisions will be undergoing processes of change management within the coming months. The purpose of these initiatives will be to focus on capacity building and training, establishing standards, policy evaluation and implementation, improved shared services, internal and, exter and external clientele, asset management, digita digitalized work processes, and the implementation of sound procurement and HR practices. The ultimate objective of this trajectory and part of the wider institutional reform initiatives is to ensure a collaborative, compassionate, service-minded, transparent, effective, and cost-efficient operation. With the Digital Government Transformation Project, Government envisages a digitally enabled public sector that provides resilient, secure, and high quality services that are easily accessible by all citizens and businesses in St. Martin. Government strategy guiding this process is founded on six core principles. One, 
user-centric design and delivery of public services, two, digital by default, yet inclusive and accessible, three, single data requests, four, trustworthy and secure, five, open and transparent, six, interoperability by default. In applying these principles, the government proposes an ambitious plan of activities for the next seven years built around four strategic objectives. These objectives are building a technologically empowered public sector, improving the quality, efficiency, security, and accessibility of public services, developing a modern legal and institutional framework, and ensuring that the public can access and use the new possibilities. In addition to this, government will be digitizing key historical government archive records to create a virtual archive, which will be accessible to the public. This digital government transformation project is funded by the Trust Fund. Another project funded by the Trust Fund is the Housing Project. St. Martin has long faced a crisis in affordable housing, a situation that was significantly intensified by the widespread destruction caused by Hurricanes Irma and Maria in 2017. To combat these difficulties, the Trust Fund Steering Committee have designated a budget of 20 million US dollars for a comprehensive housing project. The scope of this project includes the following objectives. Enhance the capability of the St. Martin Housing Development Foundation to construct and administer affordable housing for lower income groups in a financially sustainable manner. Boost the proficiency in implementing a national housing policy, strategic planning, and programs for social, affordable, and market rate housing. Build new mixed housing units, social and workforce, for rental by lower income households and the workforce target group under the management of the SMHDF. The operational relationship between government and the SMHDF is dictated by a performance agreement signed in June 1997. Both government and the SMHDF recognize the current performance agreement is outdated and requires a comprehensive review. The revision of the performance agreement is anticipated to occur during the project's preparation phase and finalized by December 2023. Government is also aiming at carrying out the following social programs. Government is committed to strengthening and expanding the safety nets available for the vulnerable population. This is done through the execution of various programs a few of which are the social registry, the home repair program, women empowerment, and the Alzheimer's conference. The intention of the social registry is to map the most vulnerable households within the community, proactively provide assessments and assistance with existing social programs and services in order to improve the delivery and quality of services. The data received through this system helps shape future policies and legislation, plan for new projects and programs, and plays a vital role in disaster risk preparedness or response. The expectation is to roll out the pilot this month. In addition, government plans the following social reforms. Financial aid reform, the establishment of an unemployment fund replacing the sesantia, and creating better purchasing power for the elderly and minimum wage earners via indexation. The Home Repair Program, which is a continuation of the Depar Department of Communica Community Development, Family and Humanitarian Affairs 2017 Recovery Program, targets the most vulnerable groups, elderly, single parents, unemployed, in our community who do not have the means to repair their homes. After completing the Home Repair Project in 2022, it was revealed that there was still a group of clients whose homes had not been fixed due to their financial and social circumstances. The homes of these clients are severely damaged and there are currently no other home repairs projects to which these clients can be referred. Hence, government has finalized the approval of the implementation of a second phase of this project. In response to the global issues such as domestic violence and violence against women and children, government executed empowerment programs that focus on women. Government in collaboration with the Listening Companion facilitated a community-based support group for single parents to improve their parenting and life skills. This will be achieved through empowerment, inspiration, and interactive life coaching, as well as through encouraging the expansion of their village and network of relationships and the maintenance of responsible parenting practices. On the topic of Alzheimer's and dementia, government is supporting the activity of local and international organizations to better educate, professional and informal caretakers on how to better deal with these diseases. 
a conference on this topic will take place this month. A new list of maximum prices for the basket of goods has been released in the third quarter of 2023. Enforcement of this list is supported by an online platform in which community, the community can report any violation. Thus far, while both verbal and documented warnings have been issued, fines have not been imposed yet as government is allowing businesses to adjust to the new system. However, active enforcement along with fines will commence later in 2023 as sufficient time has elapsed for these businesses to comply. Although this measure may not completely eliminate the high cost of living, it will improve the purchasing, purchasing power of the people. Which brings me to labor. Government is tackling labor issues through the implementation of policy as outlined in the country packages E1, labor market policy, E3, illegal employment of foreign workers, and E4, social security. From the research conducted on labor market policy and social security, several recommendations have been highlighted that government aims to carry out. Some of these are modernizing the current employment permit system, further amendments to curb the abuse of short-term contracts and strengthen job security, regulating temporary employment agencies, and further increases to the pensionable age. An interministerial pilot project is currently being carried out, which allows for the regulation of illegal foreign employment. This project will end in the fourth quarter of 2023, after which an evaluation of the project will take place. In addition, government has developed an online job portal. The job portal will serve as the primary tool for the National Employment Service Center and will aid significantly in boosting job matching process between employers and suitable job seekers. While the impact of COVID has significantly decreased, government still provided vaccines on requests for those persons who would require such. Presently, the focus is placed on better understanding the impact of non-communicable diseases, NCDs, mental health, and healthy lifestyle choices. Government is presently carrying out the PAHO World Health Organization Non-Communicable Diseases Step Survey. The information gathered via this survey will help prioritize and develop relevant prevention programs such as health promotion campaigns, population screening programs, guidelines for early detection and management of diseases at the primary care level, including lifestyle counseling, and guidelines for the management and follow-up of people with NCDs by specialized healthcare services. Government has continued to make it a priority for appropriate steps to be taken to execute the necessary improvements needed to support the mental health sector in St. Martin. These steps include, but are not limited to, the development and improvement of legislation, policy, protocols, and ways of financing the various care products regarding mental health, the development of quality standards for mental health, conducting of various types of analysis and assessments related to mental health, the development of an updated national mental health plan, and the development and implementation of a mental health project via the National, program, reco national Recovery Program Bureau. Government is aiming to execute a healthy breakfast program which will impact healthy lifestyle choices for youth to be further carried out within their adult lives. Healthy lifestyle choices of the general public will be an important aspect of the success of the general health care insurance. Government aims to have this legislation passed before January 1st, 2024. On the topic of youth, for the remaining months of 2023, Government will focus on finalizing and implementing the National Positive Parenting Support Program, which serves as a tool for enhanced child protection, the Violence Prevention Program, the promotion of meaningful youth participation among the youth population, and the development of a training plan for government workers and NGOs on the topic of integrating meaningful, meaningful youth participation. Following the completion and posting of the Sport Facilities Policy in 2021, it was provided guidance for planned repairs being executed by the NRPB at the school gyms and sports facilities, as well as the planned upgrades of the field and the track at Rahul Illich Sport Complex through capital investments. Government continues to support the sport organizations through the development of child safeguarding guidelines. During the fourth quarter of 2023, child safeguarding trainings will be conducted in collaboration with government and UNICEF with the coaches. In collaboration with NGOs and the private sector, government is striving to establish and promote Phillipsburg as a cultural capital. 
This endeavor will be in close connection with organizing the creative industries as a viable alternative to the tourism industry. Intertwined with this undertaking is the aspiration to participate in the upcoming Cari Festa and bring Cari Festa to St. Martin before 2030. The repair work in schools for both students and staff has been ongoing, albeit at a gradual pace. Out of a total of 19 schools that required repairs, six of the most severely damaged ones have been successfully fixed. The remaining 13 schools are currently undergoing repairs and improvements. Additionally, the government has planned con the construction of two new educational facilities, and these facilities are being designed with an inclusive education approach in mind. The focus is on retrofitting the new buildings to cater to the needs of even the most vulnerable students with diverse requirements. Government aims to establish a new learning institute that will serve to provide courses and training to its law enforcement professionals through established and recognized curricula. Continuous learning and lifelong learning, which will help foster a culture of perpetual professional growth and development, will be the pillars that the Law Enforcement Institute of St. Martin will rest upon. In 2023, the professional development program for teaching professionals continued. The program assists school boards in providing opportunities for school teachers with dispensation to qualify as a teacher on St. Martin within two years. To improve the careers of teaching professionals further, government will continue with reviewing the education functions and the compensation in 2024. The development of the fleet tracking system for student transportation and the implementation of policy change for a more efficient, effective school busing service leads to the implementation of the digital system and the introduction of new busing agreements in the final quarters of 2023. A few of the policy and research topics government continues the development of are the policy and roadmap for reformed secondary education, the special needs education policy and roadmap for implementation, introduction of assessments of the primary and secondary education cycle, as well as a framework for the accreditation of higher education programs and institutes, institutions. Excuse me. As government continues its efforts to promote care and well-being in elementary and secondary schools in order to identify distress among students, a digital screening tool was developed and is currently undergoing a pilot phase in four schools. Promoting care and well-being as it relates to safety and security is high on government's list of priorities. Safety and security, or the lack thereof, has a negative effect, actually a double whammy effect on our people. The lack of safety and security has a negative effect first on the well-being of our people and secondly on our tourism product, which in turn negatively affects our economy, which again negatively affects the well-being of the people. With this in mind, the persistent capacity issues at our prison are a top priority for government. As a result, government has been working on a new facility. The project consists of two phases, with phase one having officially started with the signing of the host country agreement at the beginning of the second quarter of 2023. The first phase of the project will cover a time span of approximately 20 months. The United Nations Office for Project Services has been tasked to carry out the activities to meet the goals and objectives of the new prison project. Government is in the process of finalizing a policy and strategic action plan for the Violence Prevention Program, which will cover schools, daycare centers, and after-school programs. Additionally, a communication strategy is being developed for the program. This program aims to ensure the safety and well-being of children and youth in various educational settings. With the gaming and gambling reform, government aims to establish an independent gaming authority. The goal is to achieve compliance with CFATF and FATF recommendations, safeguard the industry's integrity, reduce criminality in the industry, and promote responsible gaming whilst increasing the sector's contributions to the National Treasury via fees for online gaming. This in addition to the funds that will also contribute to the National Treasury as a result of the legislation introducing fees for lottery boots that will soon go into effect. And finally, worthy of note are three topics that have been plaguing government and the people for some time now that government is respectfully, respectively working towards and working towards finalizing. First, 
In the pursuit of enhancing the road infrastructure, government is dedicated to realizing a road network that not only attains high standards of quality, but also effectively accommodates the necessary volume of motor vehicles on the island. This will be done via the resurfacing of key main roads and the transformation of numerous dirt roads into durable concrete surfaces. This will be made feasible through a dedicated capital expenditure budget. Government is working on establishing a dedicated road fund. As prescribed in the Motor Vehicle Tax Ordinance, that should have significant positive impact for St. Martin's infrastructure. Key general benefits of implementing this road fund and how it can particularly aid St. Martin's infrastructure funding challenges are focused investment and sustainability. A road fund ensures that a portion of resources is consistently allocated solely for road infrastructure projects. This prevents the diversion of funds to other sectors and ensures a steady stream of financial support for development and improvement. Improved maintenance and safety. One of the critical aspects of road network sustainability is regular maintenance. With a dedicated fund, resources can be specifically used for upkeep and repair, preventing the deterioration of roads and reducing the need for more costly repairs down the line. The expansion of roads, the development of alternative routes, and the possibility of the development of public transportation systems. A major challenge that St. Martin currently faces is the heavy traffic congestion due to the insufficient road infrastructure. Adequate funding from a road fund could alleviate this congestion. Second, government has embarked on the strengthening of corporate governance of the public entities via, but not limited to, amending the structure of the National Ordinance Corporate Governance and the Corporate Governance Code, establishing a Corporate Governance Improvement Plan, transforming the Corporate Governance Council into a Corporate Governance Authority by expanding their role and responsibility, and investing in training young professionals to become effective supervisory board members. The airport, which is the focus of the Corporate Governance Improvement Plan, is currently in the process of reviewing and gradually implementing the recommended changes. The project ex is expected to be completed by mid-2024. And third, government expects to conclude the ongoing work to complete the legislation regulating the legal position of the personnel in the justice chain within short. A budget amendment to that effect will be presented to Parliament for approval. Once this process is finalized, the commencement of the issuing of the national degrees can take place. Mr. Chairman, Members of Parliament, our economy is recovering well, and we are seeing a positive impact on the revenue of the country with pre-Hurricane Irma output now finally expected to be achieved in 2024, leading to an increase in income for the country for the coming years, with the CFT expecting to see surpluses starting from 2024. This for a great part due to government's commitment to sound financial management to the measures as outlined in the country packages and the financial injection through liquidity loans and the trust fund, but also due to a stable and consistent government for soon to be a complete governing term, due in part to the commitment of government, but also the commitment and support of this esteemed body. But we are not there yet. Although the outlook is positive, this has not yet trickled down to the average Joe and Jane on the street. So much remains to be done. It will take the continued effort of government, parliament, the private sector, and the IGOs, NGOs, service clubs, and all the people of St. Martin, the entire village, to achieve, maintain, and sustain a brighter tomorrow for us all, all, and for generations to come. Mr. Chairman, members of parliament, in this new parliamentary year, government will once again present you with various legislative initiatives towards the execution of its plans and realization of its objectives. As representatives of the people of St. Martin, government looks forward to fruitful, efficient, and effective dialogue, as well as your committed participation. 
This with the aim of garnering your support to serve the public interest on behalf of the people of St. Martin. Mr. Chairman, members of parliament, congratulations on the opening of the 13th parliamentary year, 2023-2024. I wish you much success in this new parliamentary year, and I sincerely pray for your wisdom and discernment. Thank you. God bless you and yours, and God bless our great village, St. Martin. I thank His Excellency for his governor's address. With this distinguished guest, I declare the parliamentary year 2023-2024 officially open. I would like to ask the reception and departure committee to accompany His Excellency, the governor, and his entourage to the conference room. Please rise for the exit of His Excellency, the Governor. seated. I would like to thank the reception and the departure committee for the splendid execution of their task. You are here with discharge of your duties. Members of parliament, ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for your presence at this meeting for the opening of the parliamentary year 2023-24. I herewith close this meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated as the President of Parliament and the Prime Minister, accompanied by the Secretary General of Parliament and the Secretary General of the Council of Ministers, exit the hall. The dignitaries of the French side will now exit the hall as well and make their way to the conference room. I would now like to invite the members of parliament to leave the hall.
Council of Ministers may now also exit the hall. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your patience. You may now also exit the hall to make your way outside of the building to view the parade. Please follow the directions of the staff of the Secretariat of Parliament who will guide you to the Cyrus Wati Square. We thank you. Thank you. 